Hey everybody, I'm Madeline Sklar, host of the Social ROI Chat, and boy, what a great one we had today. I'm here with our guest, Jessica Phillips. Hey, Jessica, hey. how are you? Good, how are you? That was a lot of I fun. I am great. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was a fast hour. It's always yeah. like the fastest hour of the week. Like the chat is just <laughs> insanely quick. Uh, I appreciate you being our guest today. Uh, I appreciate you for having me. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you do a lot of things like you literally came from one of your other things and hopped right on the chat to be the fun. guest. I love it. it Total go getter. I love that. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself real quick. And, and what are the things that you're up to? Sure. So I am in Lima, Ohio, and I have a relationship marketing agency here called Now Marketing Group and started out with just kind of myself and really knew that I loved working with companies and helping them understand what made them tick and um, help them build deeper relationships with their clients, fell in love with social media kind of early on as that differentiator for them and have been working with more clients, bringing on some team members, making a lot of friends along the way. So that is awesome. here. <laughs> you, you stay really busy and you have a conference there, right? Didn't I hear that you like yeah. ran a social media conference earlier this year? What, what was that about? Yeah, so this was our fifth year at Social Media Week Lima. Um, so it's a two day event that we host in our little old backyard of Lima, Ohio, population like 40,000. But we have a lot of fun <laughs> awesome. and we bring in some speakers. Um, and yeah, the first day is like conference style. We all kind of participate together. And the day two is all hands on deck and working together. How long have you been doing that? Sister. So this was our fifth year. So the very first conference, though, I put together like after I got inspired at Social Media Week or Social Media Marketing World, and I came back. I was like, we have to do something like this in our hometown. So it was like yes. literally two weeks, and in my office, and we had like forty-five people crammed into like this room that should probably have had twenty-five, but it was great, and it's just kind of grown from there. Wow, I love that. <laughs> so you go to Social Media Marketing World. I'm surprised we haven't bumped into each other because I've been going there for a few years now. Yeah, um, I went every year. Yeah, since really? the beginning. Okay. Yeah, we will yeah. definitely bump into each other for sure. Although it's yes. gotten so big, uh, <laughs> it's easy yeah. to miss people. Um, but I will definitely make sure you we have to come to the s'mores up. parties. We do the I do the s'mores parties Ooh. on the high end. It's our little after hour Ooh. kind of s'mores with friends. <laughs> that sounds like my kind of party when you say s'mores. Yeah. Ooh, I you like know, this sound building, of that. building the closer relationships with people that way. <laughs> well, and I have my other ta chat other chat Twitter smarter and because the conference were there on a Thursday, mm -hmm. gosh, I wish I, I'll have to check and see if like I'll be there on a Tuesday because it'd be great to do social ROI in person, but I do Twitter smarter there in person, which is amazing. So I would love for you to come and hang out with us when we yeah, do that. I would love that. It'll be, be a awesome. lot of fun. And we've got uh, people here with us live on this live awesome. stream. We'll just do a quick shout out. we got Cheval here. And uh, Joe's here. She's a great chat. She's part of the Managed Flitter team. And I is here with us. I is like your biggest fan. Oh, sweet. She was so sweet. She I'm just, like, oh, she uh, loved it. She just Aww. loved the chat today. She was awesome. And Sue's here, Sue Doyle. And uh, yeah, a great example of meeting people yeah. online and in real life. Uh, exactly. Like That's what I love about these Twitter chats. So, I know Sue Doyle from the social ROI chat. And we were both at a conference several months. Uh, it's called uh, Agents of Change uh, in Portland, oh, Maine. I love that. Rich so Brooks, great, I love Rich. Yes, yeah. Rich Brooks, a great conference. And so she attended and we got to hang out, and which was incredibly awesome. It's always nice going from the online to the in real life. I just think that's the yeah. coolest thing. So, it's so cool, uh, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about relationship marketing. That was the yeah, topic right. today. And uh, tell us, like, what is it all about and, and why is it important for mm -hmm. us? It's just a different way of thinking about sales and marketing and how it aligns. Like most people think, okay, marketing is what brings people into the door to close a sale. But really, you should never stop pursuing or seeking after your clients, even after you get them in. They're, you're still always trying to earn their attention and build a deeper relationship with them. Because the key is transitioning from thinking about new sales to think about repeat referral sales. So if you think about it that way, you're always wooing your clients, you're always trying to serve them and the best clients to serve them more. So you're you're working through this process with them to make sure that you keep and maintain that relationship and then they will refer others in like them, which then is a good fit for you and you don't feel like you always have to chase after this new business. It just will start coming in more naturally for you. 
Absolutely. Uh, what are some effective strategies for this? Like, how should we be approaching it? Yeah, the first part is really just about planning first, like just thinking about you have to know who you are at your core as a business. Like, what do I do that's better than anyone else? Like, whatever that thing is, like if you're selling insurance, for example, you may be selling the same kind of insurance as someone else, right, that's down the block. But what do you do that's better than anyone else? Like, what do you who do you work with that's um, that you click with that you can really help serve? So knowing who you are who you can help specifically, who you can't help, and then what your goals are overall. So like, where do you see yourself growing and how do you wanna grow with those clients? So you make sure you iron out that plan and then it's all about where I call putting your magnets because you wanna draw people in. So then you think about, yeah. okay, where do I wanna set up online? How do I wanna attract them in? What kinds of conversations do I wanna have with them? And how am I going to stay in touch with people long-term to make sure that when I am getting in this repeat referral business, it's really easy for others to do business with me and to stay in touch and to let me know how I'm doing and to to refer business on to me, that you're always having this, this constant connection no matter how large or small your company is, that you still are able to stay connected to how your customers and your team and everyone's feeling about you as a core business. Right. And when when you were answering that question during the chat, you were talking, mm -hmm. I think that's so important about being an active listener and engaging mm -hmm. is so incredibly important. Can you touch on that a little yeah. bit? Yeah, it is because you don't know. I think in, when you get into business, you're so busy wearing so many hats. So you think that everybody maybe knows or gets what you're doing or trying to do, but you may be so busy that you're not really hearing something that could be so simple that you're missing. Maybe it's something, another service you need to offer, something you need to tweak. So you really have to be an active listener, not just with your customers, but with your team, with you know everything that's out there, with even what other competitors are out there, you know, potentially. You have to be an active listener. So so whether that's, you know, seeing what's being said online, whether that's just listening into your team and the feedback they're providing or the questions that your customers are asking, make sure that you're not just active listening, but you're actively recording what people are saying and taking yeah. note of it and doing something about it, whatever that thing is, right? So if it's writing a blog to answer a question or whether that's tweaking a service or, you know, doing training for your team. But listening is so important because it's going to help shape and grow your business because your business should always be evolving on some level. Such great advice. It's so incredibly true. Mm -hmm. I'm always doing Twitter polls. I find Twitter polls mm -hmm. as a great way to hear from the community. Like last week when, when Twitter upped the 140 to the 280, yeah. it was so funny. <laughs> it literally happened in the middle of the social ROI chat last week. Like we're yeah. all like, Starting the chat, we're all at the 140, and then halfway through, a few people are like, oh, they got the 280 and started doing these long tweets, and it was like, whoa, and then we all started getting it, and it was like, wow, what a big change this is for us. How is this going to impact Twitter chat? So I did a Twitter poll asking everybody, do you love it, do you hate it, or are you on the fence? I ended up getting like 500 uh Mm -hmm. uh, things. I mean, I can't even talk now. 500, uh, responses to this because people were just like so opinionated and eager to give their response. And if we're listening to what they're talking about, we really can grab a lot of information. I end up putting a blog post out about it and a mm -hmm. podcast episode. It really helps you know what everybody is thinking about just by listening. Yeah. So and just by you listening though, that was able you to take the listening one as, as feedback in a way and engaging your community, which shows people that you're taking notice, but then also collaborating with others, putting them maybe in right. your blog. Now they're going to share it out. So it's, it's a win win. Um, speaking of your Twitter post, I was actually hoping for 280 characters today. Uh, I was like, maybe I'm changing my opinion on this because I had more to say and I'm going to have to start another answer or whatever. You know? Well, you know, what's funny is that um, I've been very, I was very against it. Like when they first mentioned this a few months mm -hmm. ago and I was on uh, Mike Stelzner's social media talk show talking mm -hmm. about it and he was for it. And I said, well, I don't even think they're going to do it. I think they're just all talk. They're testing yeah. it. And then they did it last week. I'm like, okay, well, I'm on the fence now. I, I don't know. I don't know if I like it or hate it, but I'm on the fence. And then just mm -hmm. by spending some time getting a more complete thought out and just trying it out. It's like, 
but you know, doing it for good, not doing it to mm -hmm. spam. I'm worried about people yeah. spamming too much with it, but, and you know, the marketers going crazy, but just to get a more complete thought out or doing some bullet points, uh, like promoting the Twitter chat and actually saying like, we're going to talk about this, this, and this being able to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, put more thought into it can be a good thing. So now I've really changed how I feel and I want to do another Twitter poll a week later because so many people yeah. have told me since they did it and they put either on the fence or they dislike it that now they like it. So it's really yeah. interesting just by listening to what the community yeah. has to say. I, I, I really Isn't love that. Isn't that funny how we are so resistant to change? Myself, I'm yes. talking about myself here and then we're like, well, they actually <laughs> like it don't take it away just yet like i think i might try I this out a little bit i know yeah. i'd be like wait 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 wait, wait, wait. okay yeah. i kind of yeah. like it don't warm it up to the idea now yeah <laughs> well you know I, I think so many of us feel like twitter is twitter because of the 140 and and it's all about the brevity and you know, taking that away. And I tell you what was interesting. So last week when it was the first full day, you know, last, last Tuesday, that evening, as I was uh, starting to write my blog post, I remember just clicking on the home screen just to see like all the tweets and what people are saying. And it felt like Facebook, like it was just these yeah. long, long, but was interesting. Twitter said when they did the post saying, Hey, we, we, we did this last week. They said that the newness wears off because they tested it several months yeah. ago. They said the newness wears off and people will go back to the 140. And sure enough, yeah. you really do see that now that people are uh -huh. going back like, oh, this is cool. Let me do let me try a 280 character tweet. Yeah. And now it's kind of going back back to normal, which is great because on a Twitter chat, I'm a little nervous, like, you know, what if everybody was doing really long <laughs> tweets? 280. You saw how yeah. fast the chat was. Oh, my that gosh. Be, yeah. That would be a little crazy. Uh, I says, I'm one of the few people who like the change. Now I like it even more. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I think I think people are really starting to, to like that. Um, so next up, let's talk about um, what are the benefits to relationship marketing for our businesses? Yeah, there's so many. One is just keeping your clients long term. So you're not always having to worry about trying to get new clients and new clients in. You just focus on the clients that you have there, do a great job of serving them. It feels like this VIP experience thing that you have going on with your clients and other people are going to start taking notice and they'll want to be a part of it. So like one thing we've done like at Now Marketing Group, like I've never had a salesperson. So I've only just did free trainings and then focused on our clients, did a really great job, and then they would refer us on. So it almost works as like, this is your salesperson for you and you have this sales funnel like happening online. So yes, you're leading with relationship marketing for the fact of serving and building a better long-term relationship with your clients, but it honestly helps you then on the sales side too. So, cause you're gonna keep your clients longer, they're gonna end up spending more with you and they're going to be your sales reps for you, which is a win, win, win. Um, and it helps differentiate yourself against someone else that maybe is coming in doing the same type of service as you. You have this little bit of differentiator because you're able to add that personal human side of what you do versus trying to compete on price, which is a losing game. Like, you know, you, that's a race to the bottom, as Seth Godin says, um, and chances are you might win. So you don't have to worry about competing on price, which is another win of relationship marketing. That I like. Right. Exactly. Um, let's do one more question. And if anybody here live has a question, feel free to post it. Uh, we could probably take one or two quick ones. Um, another question is word of mouth referrals are gold. We definitely know this, right? How can marketers ensure that their customers feel inspired to recommend them? <laughs> Yeah, so I, I kind of, I love word of mouth, first of all. When we get a yeah. client in, we always ask them, like, where are you finding your best leads? And they always, hands down, say word of mouth referral. So we're like, okay, so how can we double down on that? One of the things we do is say, feature them. Tell their story more so the people that you're serving, like, tell their story, get them involved, feature them, highlight them in whatever capacity. Highlight your team because people want to share things that they feel connected to. So um, I'll give you an example. One of our clients, we work with um, so developmental disabilities locations. So we work a lot with grant and government contracts and um, nonprofit work. So instead of them talking about the services that they provided and for the, to, to combat symptoms, instead we started saying, okay, let's talk about, you know, your, 
your your STNAs and um, some of the people that are working with your clients, your the caregivers, and tell the stories of the people that you're serving. By doing that, in turn, that turned into them sharing it out, the team members getting involved, and then that word of mouth kind of naturally happening. So it wasn't even like it had to be incentivized. Yes, can you know you incentivize referrals and word of mouth and getting try to get people to refer you on yes but i always feel like the best word of mouth comes when you don't have to ask for it like when it's just naturally happening because people are so passionate about what you're doing and they they get inspired by what you're doing or they care enough to share you know um where they really want to pass it on and insist that other people do business with you you can always tell when you're when you're winning at that game when someone else is like why would you choose that you need to be choosing this because of this and they're like fighting your battles for you that's when you know you won. yeah <laughs> like absolutely struggles. you know there's always one side or the other you know but. it's such a great feeling too i i i have that uh with with uh my twitter smarter chat that i run and, yeah. and uh, having a community of people uh that the word of mouth is so powerful after doing this for so long, you know, and you build this great community. And I'm starting to see that with, with this chat mm -hmm. as well with social ROI, we've got a vibrant mm -hmm. community community, as you saw, and there's so much yeah. word of mouth happening now. It is so great to watch this. I do see we have uh, yeah. a, a couple of questions we'll do real quick. Cheval says, can you yeah. share about the challenges of putting together a social media conference? How much time is this? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, Give us the, the abbreviated challenge. version, <laughs> if there is one. Yeah, yeah. So it is a lot of fun putting on a conference. So you know, it, it is a lot of fun, and I highly encourage people. You know, if you're inspired to connect and bring people together, that you put on some kind of a training event, whatever that looks like. The challenges are definitely with organizing. You know, you're trying to work with lots of different people's busy schedules and bringing you know speakers in. So you're trying to coordinate and bring people in together, um, and you're trying to get the word out. You have to market your conference, and there's so many others out there. So you have to differentiate yourself. So your first couple of years are really like proving yourself, like. Um, so, you know, you have to really lay it out there and you have to be willing to invest some money and know that this is going to be a labor of love for a little bit and probably not, um, in most cases anyway, some have really got this down pat, but a money maker in the first couple of years, at least for us, it wasn't, we wanted to make it affordable. So it's something that was more of a, a labor of love and wanted to give back. So I would say coordinating everybody's schedules, um, financial, um, and making sure you Think of everything like, OK, I need, you know, snacks and water and coffee and, you know, notes, paper and all the little things that go into it that, you know, it's more above and beyond just bringing people together. And, and it seems yeah. like, you know, relationship marketing really plays into this because like mm -hmm. you just can't come out of nowhere and think you could just put something yeah. on like this in yeah. uh, an industry where you have not built up relationships, people mm -hmm. do not know you or they just have not gotten to know, like and trust you yet. So yes. um, yeah. it seems like from when you said that you've been going to social media marketing mm -hmm. world every year, I imagine through that you built up really key relationships that have helped Huge. you build this conference. Huge Which is relationships. The people that are coming into Lyme, Ohio, it's not for the scenery and it's not for the vacation spot. <laughs> it's definitely because of relationships. I mean, some of the yeah. people who have come in there have been like really big keynote speakers that get paid. And I don't have that budget for that. But I'm like, yeah. we'll have fun, you know, you can hang <laughs> out. and you'll get a little bobblehead of yourself at the conference. I saw, um, yes, I remember that. I was like, whoa, who does that? How cool. I remember so, seeing some of the speakers yeah. this year showing that's like, oh, man, that would be that's a nice perk. You know, yeah, I like, like that. little personalized things like that. That goes a long way. You oh, know? It totally so, goes a long way. Yeah. That is so smart of you. Um, <laughs> I had a question. We'll take this and make this our last question. So you have such a strong community. You're good at building your community. What are your top recommendations for building communities? Um, I would say looking at people that can align together and helping other people connect and always think of how can I be the connector for other people? And by you being the connector for other people and building, bringing two people that should be connected together, they end up connecting with you on a deeper level. So like, um, you know, for example, there was a client of mine that I knew could work really well with um, a speaker that I knew that was in the space, Brian Vanzo and one of our clients, 50 Strong. And we we're like, you guys need to like, 
pair together and they ended up working together and they're both, you know, copying me on the tweet yesterday and in the, in their Instagram posts because they were so happy by that. And by building those relationships that way and, and just little opportunities where you can connect to people or whether it's s'mores nights at social media marketing world, but look for <laughs> every opportunity <laughs> you can to just find out a little bit more that's, you know, not just surface level, not more than what you, what do you do, you know, how long have you been doing it, but find out the real person and get to know them and let them feel comfortable to be themselves and then find out other people that they would gel with and bring them all together. That is awesome. I just penned your Twitter to the top here so everybody can go check you out on Twitter if they're not already. How else can people get in touch with you? Yeah, um, any of the social networks, so whichever one you like the most, I'm there, uh, Jessica Phillips, um, or my website, jessicaphillips.com, and it's Jessica with a K. Awesome. Jessica, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the chat and then to hop over awesome. here on the after chat. So great getting to know you better and uh, looking too. forward to meeting you in real life in person at Social Media Marketing World next year for Me sure. Me too. I've been a fangirl of your stuff for a long time. So oh, I'm thank you. You're so sweet. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much. And uh, thank you, everybody who's watching. We'll have the replay up. We'll have the chat recap up shortly as well. And then we'll have another great guest next week. And so, until next time, we'll see you out on Twitter or maybe Facebook or somewhere else on social. The, spaces, the social spaces. <laughs> exactly. Right, Bye, everybody. Bye.